Welcome to the Philippines. Now, this is not a true first impressions video of the Philippines for me because I lived here 25 years ago. It's been a long time and it's taken me a long time to come back. Now, after university, I took an international internship. I moved to Cebu for just under a year and I also visited Manila for a week, but I don't remember any of it. It was so long ago. There were no smartphones, there was no Wi-Fi. There was only dial-up internet and you had to go to an internet cafe, pay $5 an hour. Things have changed, the Philippines has changed, so this is all new to me. Today, we're gonna check out some traditional Filipino food. We're going to do a little bit of a historical tour because I don't think I did it last time. Maybe have some dim sum, check out Chinatown, and of course, we're gonna look at public transit because this is a mega city. So to get from one side to the other is complicated, and I don't know how we're gonna get there, but we're gonna have a good time trying to figure it out. So we are staying in the Poblacion neighborhood and it is one of the oldest in Makati. They say if you're new to Manila, you should stay in Makati because uh, it's close to everything, which I think is kind of relative, but it's definitely an up and coming neighborhood. It is one of, Poblacion is one of the oldest. It used to be kind of the government hub, city hall. Now it's an interesting mix. There are a lot of clubs here. There are a lot of neighborhoods. There are a lot of boutique hotels. It's definitely changing. It used to be a backpacker hub, but I think it's definitely getting just a little bit more gentrified and will continue to get gentrified. But we've been really enjoying it. Uh, everyone here speaks English very nice. It was actually, we walked through the business district of Makati and it's beautiful and it's so green and it just made me think what a green city. Now I know not all of Manila is like this because as I said, it's like a mega city, but I will say this, so green, we really enjoyed it. It's very different than the Manila that I remember. Right now we're heading for breakfast. I've heard there is a very local spot that's famous in the area to have the most popular breakfast in the Philippines. I heard you had the best tapsalog. Yes. Is that true? Okay. All right, so we're at Do Re Mi Tapsi, which is very well known amongst locals. A lot of people who went to the neighboring school, they come here, they have fond memories of it, but it's also really well regarded, has been around for a while. And so what they serve are salogs. Salog is actually a combination of two words, which is garlic fried rice, and then also a usually a fried egg, but it means egg. Um, tap salog comes from tapa, which is a way of pre-Hispanic times that they would actually cure meat. They used to sun dry it. So it's beef, rice, egg. But today you can get any kind of salog. There's our salogs everywhere. You can get them made out of pork, chicken, fish, basically anything that you can serve with rice and egg, which is pretty much everything, is a salog. Oh, beef is good. Mm, it's a little bit sweet. It's very tender. You can get salogs everywhere from restaurants to the street. Not always good. This one is really good. And then even though we've only been here for 24 hours, we've already had a lot of garlic rice and a lot of really good garlic rice. Mm. This is good. But what does an Indonesian think about this? The king of rice. What does the king of rice think about this? It's tasty. Tasty, but yeah. let's get to the beef. Mm, you like the beef? Perfect. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, with the mmm. 
The creamy egg and the sweet beef. Mm, this is good. Next up, we're gonna figure out how we get over to Intramuros, which is a historical area built uh, from when Spain colonized, invaded uh, the Philippines. I don't think I went here before, maybe because I was so young I didn't think it was interesting, but actually I would like to see it now. And it's supposed to be a great place and it's close to Chinatown, so we'll have a little bit of history and then we're gonna have some more food. Colonial architecture, interesting, up top it's still all wood, which was probably what it originally was, was all wood at one time. Oh, I had also heard that this place has really good salad. You can see, oh, it's a little bit more expensive here, but not that much more expensive, but I did hear it's really good. And they have things like corn, I think that's a hot dog salad, pork chop. Look at these power lines. This is just years and years of years of power lines. It reminds me of Bangkok, actually, when we were in Old Town. I just saw, I think this woman has pancit or noodles and Alan is a little bit hungry. But I don't know. Yeah, she does have it. What is that on top? From my mom. Uh, no pork. On no, oh, no, ours. Beef. Beef. Yeah, beef is good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. Uh, uh, spicy. Yes, All right, we need some of that. All right. Did you want a drink? I see they have a weird blue drink, which makes me think you'd like it. It's blue lemonade. The pandan. Okay, so this is buko pandan. Is it coconut? Coconut flavor. Oh, coconut flavor with pandan. And then gulaman, which is a very popular drink here. Blue lemonade we had yesterday, and then chocolate. All the things that the kids like. All right, I'll try. Now, I'm not a huge fan of these kinds of drinks, but it is coconut. It's not for me. It's very sweet. It tastes a little bit like corn. Not for me. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's all you. What do you think it tastes like? Do you like it? It's like Indonesian drink, I like it. What is the Indonesian drink? Eschampur. Uh, Eschampur, yeah. I don't like Eschampur either. Delicious. It's delicious. It's like a beef shamai. Mm. Dumpling is good. It's a little bit like a meatball in a dumpling. Mm. Oh, good. It's really good. All right, I have to say, this was a really good find. If you want cheap eats, generally, you gotta go to a school uh, because there are lots of kids around. There are parents dropping off kids. And so, uh, noodles, 50, the drink, 15, really good. We had actually been looking for noodles for a while because this guy right here is Indonesian. And so he wants to have me noodles and he also wants to have fried rice. We haven't found the fried rice yet, but we have found the meat, what so. This guy right here. I'm not fishing for <laughs> So this is Intramuros, uh, a lot of Philippines is the words are actually in Spanish or derived from Spanish and that's because of colonization. This is probably the best preserved area but I haven't been here so I didn't come here last time. I have no memory of this. The buildings are 
typical colonial style. And this was a walled city, so the Spanish built this area. Um, there's a fort, there's a cathedral, I believe there's also a church that we might check out. Um, but the idea is that the Spanish really protected themselves from in here. Now in Manila, not everyone lived within this protected city. So I believe later when we go see Chinatown, that's, uh, that's actually where the Chinese um, the majority of the Chinese population lives. But I think we're just gonna walk around and check some things out. I can see why January is such a popular month because it's breezy. You can wear jeans if you want to and a t-shirt. It's not too hot, it's not too sunny. This has actually been a really great time for us to travel. But here in Manila, it's been fantastic because for most of the last year, we visited all of the major cities during heat waves and it was really bad. But here, I think it's probably 31 degrees, which feels very pleasant. So this is St. Augustine, which is one of the things that most people visit here. We're actually not going to do this because right behind us is the cathedral. I was brought up Catholic, so I have been into a lot of churches. Alan is still interested in them because, well, it's a novelty for him, not his religion. So we're gonna head this way to the cathedral. Ah, the church bells are going off. We're heading to the cathedral. I have to say one of the nicest things about being here is actually that it's very quiet. So if the noise of Manila gets to you, and it certainly can, this is a very quiet spot to spend some time. And you can see a lot of people are just hanging out in the parks, taking a moment. So that was interesting. We actually were visiting during a mass. That's why there were church bells. So the mass section is kind of cordoned off. If you're going to attend mass, you can do it without you know, people taking video and photos of you. And then everyone in the back can actually take photos and video. And it was actually right, quite nice. Three popes have visited this cathedral. So uh, one, I think in 1970, I can't remember which one that is, but Pope John Paul II, who I think is probably the most famous pope, and then most recently, uh, Pope Francis. So definitely an important place, not only for Filipinos, but also for uh, the Vatican to come here and send three popes over the span of 50, 75 years, 50 years, yeah. Over while I was waiting for him, I saw these delicious things that actually remind me of something I eat in Cebu. Yeah, that looks great. Thank you. What are these called normally? So this is toron. Yeah, toron and banana hue. Banana. Uh, banana hue. Hue? Yeah, banana hue. Ah. Sweet banana. Hue? Yeah, hue. Letter hue. Hue. Banana, banana hue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it looks so good. Yes. Sir. Thank you so much. Oh, that looks good. Is it good? All right. All right, so this is banana cute. Mmm, that's good. The bananas are too sweet. It's almost like it's a little bit underripe, a little bit starchy. 50 pesos. I was feeling a little bit low blood sugar, and so this is perfect. So these are the prison. The little shops are in the prison. Wow, I didn't even get that. We have not walked in to see anything yet. So there are actually dungeons here on site. They're not open all the time. So I think what we need to do is go look at a map, see what we want to see. It's a walled city. It's a fort. And actually, because it's a walled city, that's part of the reason why they're able to preserve this. Because Manila is quite windy, but the wall protects a lot of the buildings. And then uh, there are a number of different elements here. Just because you have the Spanish, then you also have the Americans, and then the Japanese. And Alan was telling me, you know, Indonesia was colonized for 350 years by the Dutch. By the Dutch. But he said 
a lot of people feel like the Japanese who occupied for 3.5 years, that they were far more cruel than the Dutch. I don't know if that's true, but... Um, more cruel than the Dutch. Yeah, so certainly I think during those years, during World War II, it was very difficult here. And so there should be some information about that here. Oh, what a cute coffee shop slash souvenir store. Hello, I saw you have a free map. Yeah. We are right here. We want this one. If we walk down, we should be able to see a lot of the things and then maybe come back around the other way. All right. You can actually just read a little bit about. So this was to fortify the defenses. Oh, this is the wall. This is actually the wall. Much of this was destroyed during World War II. But even before that, over the years, I think it was fortified a few times. These are the American barracks. You can see there's not a lot left to them. These are really ruins at this point. We're now heading into Fort Santiago, and this is interesting. I thought there were three uh, colonizations, occupations of the Philippines, but actually here they say that it was first the Spanish, then Great Britain, then the Americans, and then finally Japanese. Now, in between that time, this fort actually started out as a wooden fort, but there was a war in 1574 with China, and so Chinese burnt it down. And then in its place, they built this really impressive wall. Definitely can't be burned down. And you can see they've made their mark because in the center there, there is a coat of arms that is Spanish. We've now reached to where the dungeon is. So it says you are entering hollowed grounds. Obviously, horrible things happened here. Please conduct yourselves with dignity and respect at all times. I don't know how dark it's going to be down there, but I can see people really bending down to get in. So I think we're going to go check it out. So the two times it was primarily used, one during Spanish colonization um, as a prison, but the second um, during World War II by the Japanese, so for what they called dissidents. Now, Battle of Manila was 1945, end of the war. Japanese left 600 people in these dungeons locked in, and so they suffocated, starved to death. Um, horrible, they were just, I guess, in piles. And so what they say is, right next to us is a white marble cross, and so those people that were found in the prison are, were given a proper burial right next to it but really horrible. What do you think about this place? This place is amazing. Oh. Has uh, spectacular things. Can you believe I didn't come the last time I was here? I missed out on so much. Yeah, maybe you can you not uh, explore more inside. Yeah. That's why, but for me, very spectacular, mm -hmm. yeah. That was great, and now we've got about a 15-20 minute walk to Chinatown to go to a place that's very well known to have affordable dim sum. And from what I've heard, there are lots of really great options, so we don't have to worry about Alan only being able to eat the vegetarian. It's actually quite easy to get from Intramuros to uh, Benondo, and they just built, well, I don't know when they built this bridge, but there's still a sign on it. So it's a China aid bridge project between the two sides of the river, which is fantastic. And it actually looks like this is a place where a lot of people hang out. This bridge, it's so cool. Oh, these police, there's a police station right here. They don't seem to care about those people back there. 
Oh, Raja Salomon. See, I see the, the name. Ah, cool. So earlier today, Alan said to me, he said, you know, uh, the Minangkabao, the people from his small region in West Sumatra, um, they are responsible for the Muslim people in Manila. And I was like, what a random fact. Can you find the information on that? And he could. So we found it online, even Wikipedia had it, that there were a few immigrants from West Sumatra that moved to Manila early on. And the thing is, so many people from West Sumatra, the Meninkabao, have moved all over the world. They're, they are a migrating people, especially the men would go and look for work, look for a new life. So you can find them all over. And the funny thing is, it kind of reminds me of the Atavalans, the people from Atavalo in Northern Ecuador. You can also find them all over the world. They just have a culture of that. And so we had this conversation today, and then we both see this. So Raja Solomon. Raja means king and Solomon is his name. And Alan was right. But yeah, this is the guy. It's so cool. Now Alan's taking a video to show all his friends in West Sumatra. All right, we are actually looking for this dim sum restaurant. But yeah, Chinatown busy. Chinese New Year is in a week. And so this church, oh, it's getting all done up. It looks fantastic. Now the interesting thing about Manila is that even there are, though there are street lights, they also have police who don't follow the street light rules, he decides when traffic goes. Oh wow, this looks fantastic here. What do you think about Chinatown so far? It's interesting. Yeah. It's, it's busy. Uh, this no. this is one week before. Because it's colorful everywhere. Yeah. So it's uh, making you pay attention. It is. It's very colorful. It's very busy. Not a lot of beeping, which is great, but there's a lot going on, a lot of music. This is one week before Chinese New Year. So I think that might be why it's so busy right now. So a lot of people getting ready and it's busy. Oh, wow. Well. Okay. So lots of shopping. You have to go on the sidewalk right now, but man, it is crowded. These are people all ordering things for Chinese New Year. Where? Here? Yes. All right, we made it. We did find the place, Yiying Fast Food. Here's a restaurant, it's two floors, and then over there they have takeaway. You can take it home. So, I don't know if you know this about me, but I just can't wait in line for food. I just, I don't know. I just feel like there's great food all around the world. You either pick a time, obviously we've come and it's the busiest. We're gonna have to come back to Manila and try it. We're not gonna wait for this. I feel bad, but I did get to see Chinatown. So, I think we're gonna end this video here. I really enjoyed walking around. This has been a great day in Manila. A lot of people tell you not to go to Manila, that you can just skip it. But I think Manila is worth a day. In fact, I think what we'll do, maybe when we come back into town or back to Manila before flying out of the country, we might stay in the Mendondo neighborhood. So if that's the case and you know good places to eat, please send them to me because we'll stay overnight. We'll spend a day maybe doing a video here, which I think will be great. We'll go at a better time. I think we just came during the wrong time. I just can't wait in line for food. So I will see you next time. Manila, you have been so good. Benando, I'm definitely coming back. Join my Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.